Welcome everyone. This is Pipeline Help She Code Contribute She Code Africa Contribute on uh, project meeting. Today's May the twelfth, twenty twenty two. Topics I had on the agenda: questions and answers, and what's next. Um, forgive the very weak agenda. Are there other topics you'd like to be sure we put on the agenda? Sophia from you or Nafisa from you? Maybe Git plugin pull request progress from last meeting, right? Because that's a good one. And actually it's pull requests, plural. Sophia's PR and Afi's PR. Any other topics you'd like to be sure we get on the agenda? Yes, please. How to, um, how to kickstart um, documentation for a chosen plugin? After you probably discovered um, a plugin that actually needs documentation from the listed one in the document, let's say, for instance, um, the HTTP request. Do you just go ahead and start documenting? Or... Good question. Okay, so let's put how to add documentation to a plugin, and we'll put that as multiple locations and multiple levels of documentation that can be to improve. Good. Very good. Okay, so is that an okay way to phrase it? And we'll put that on the agenda? Yes, yes. Okay, good. All right. Any other topics you want to be sure we cover on the agenda? So um, during the Git, right, the Git documentation, you actually created like a separate branch where we are working with, that's what we're working with. So for other um, plugins, are we going to do the same, follow the same pattern we use in the Git plugin? We just create like uh, our own a separate branch then starts working with that branch how do we go about this? Good, good question. And let's let's put that one as I'd call it the branching technique for pull requests. Uh, maybe it's why did we use a separate branch branch for the Git plugin? And uh, why won't we use won't we use separate branches for other plugins. Does, does that good topic for the agenda? Any other topics? Um, okay, now I apologize, but I have to set a hard stop at 45 minutes. because I think Bruno, you and I may have, maybe it's, no, no, maybe not. Let me, sorry, I need to pause my sharing for just a minute to check my calendar. My calendar's a little frantic today. Let me do a quick check of my calendar. Oh yes, I have a hard stop in 45 minutes because I'm preparing for another, another event that I have to host. So, so I apologize, we'll have to stop in 45, but let's get this up on the screen again and share screen. Okay, good. So, all right, so pull request progress, branching technique, how to add documentation to a plugin and what's next. Anything else that should be on the agenda? Okay. Then let's go ahead with those and we'll, so we'll, we'll look first at progress. Here it's what we can see is, thank you, Sophia, for yours that you've submitted. I've made a request for some changes. Oh, and it looks like you've applied those changes. Good. And you did that after I had gone to bed or after I had disconnected yesterday. Excellent. Okay. So you have applied the changes and they should be changes changes requested and applied ready for review again right excellent and that's that's the process we like 
And my apologies, Afi, that your PR came in just a little bit after Sophia's and I didn't get to your review yet. So I am behind schedule there. I need to review this one and I haven't done the reviews yet. Thankfully, the CI job did pass. So that gives me the confidence. Okay, it's not continuous integration, did not find any problems with it. So this one needs review. Needs review, uh, likely needs changes. And then, so Afi, what we'll do is I will, Mark will review uh, late today. So by, by late today, well after the time when you should be asleep and long asleep. So uh, Afi, if you check tomorrow morning for comments and uh, changes. Okay. Thanks for doing it, both of you. Thank you very much for, for spending the effort and for good progress there. Any question that came out for the two of you on that experience of submitting those? Po oh, actually, that leads us to the next topic, but any other questions beside the branching technique? Um, actually, had <laughs> oh, you go ahead. Go ahead. We <laughs> kind of had a discussion yesterday, so I guess that's what Sophia is about to say. No, I was actually going to ask how to um, resolve um, pull requests um, in case, like, when you request for a change, up, do I actually, like, resolve it? Because I noticed that some of the comments were really not outdated, and I had to probably manually go resolve every requested change. Yeah. Okay, so, so let me see if I got your question correctly. When... A, a change is requested, um, should I resolve the comment if GitHub did not resolve it automatically? Yes, yes, yes. Good, okay, and, and that's, a, that's a, a question that, so to, to highlight in case others may not be aware what that means, what you see here if, oh, whoops, if we look at Sophia's with, that had changes requested, what you'll see is it shows this, I offered several suggestions, there's my comment, and then hidden behind these gray bars are a series of, let's make that bigger so it's readable, of things that are listed as outdated changes. And it says show resolved. So if I click show resolved, it shows, hey, this was Mark's suggestion. He suggested change, th remove this text. And what Sophia did is she, she accepted that change, I assume accepted it, and then did the correct thing of mark the conversation resolved because she'd taken action on it. So, so usually if your action that you're taking does what you feel would be res resolves completely the conversation, then you absolutely should do exactly what you did and mark it resolved because it helps me as a reader later to know, oh, she's processed each of these things, she thought about them and decided, yes, this one is solved. And, and she, whether, whether you accepted my change or not, by your showing it as resolved, that tells me you've thought about it and you've made the, that conscious thought that yes, this should be marked as resolved. So did, did that answer your question, Sophia? Yes, it did. Thank you. Now, now, to give you that there's a subtlety hiding here, there are some places where a, a comment is made and someone may say, oh, I think it's resolved. They mark it as resolved and others find it that, oh, no, it's not really resolved. And they may correctly say, I'm going to unresolve this conversation because we need to need to talk more about, need to chat more about this. So if we need to chat more about this, I may unresolve it. And some, in some projects, people will say, hey, please don't resolve my conversations because it makes it hard to find my comments. So be aware of the place where you're at. But for me on the Git plugin and for most people, they will find it helpful if you resolve the conversation when you think it's done. So I'm going to list it as now, and now when you look at it, you'll see, oh, 
here is this, it's still outdated because the change actually has, has been applied, but I unresolved it. And now after it's resolved, then Mark can resolve it. Then in Mark or Sophia could resolve it. And so now I'm gonna resolve it again. Good, all right, excellent question. So did that, did that, yes, in most cases is the answer. And that's sufficient for your, your question, Sophia? Yes, it is. Great. All right, so now, Afi, you had asked the question about the branching technique, and I apologize that I even used that branching technique. Let's look at what, what came of that as a result. So what happened was Sophia submitted her change as a pull request to the Jenkins CI ad, whoops, back. Let me get the page back, sorry. To the ad checkout SCM examples branch. That's, that's fine in this case, but what it means is that hasn't been made visible yet. And even when I merge it, it won't be made visible yet to users because things that are visible to users are done on the master branch. So the fact that I had, I started with a template and shared with you a, a template, hey, fill in these things, that was a help, helper to get you started. But ultimately I'll have to merge this from the add checkout SCM examples branch to the master branch. And most maintainers will want you to submit your pull request to the master branch rather than to, the, to, to any other branch. They want you to be proposing changes that they will put into production. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, so what it was is why did we use a separate branch for the Git plugin? Mark wanted to provide a framework where Sophia and Afi could write. And, and that, was, that was the whole purpose there, right? I, I, uh, the outline was not ready for the master branch uh, because I didn't want to publish it to everybody. So the outline was placed on a separate branch. And then uh, we collaborated, we worked together, worked on the separate branch. When the work is done, um, it will be, will be merged by me to the master branch. So that, that, that complication, we wouldn't want to put that through for other maintainers, but let's see this way, Mark will merge. But for, for the two of you, for this particular thing, it was better for your experience that we did it on a separate branch. So uh, other maintainers want your proposal to their master branch, to their primary branch. I should quit saying master, shouldn't I? Because the word master is no longer to their, it's to their primary branch. Master or main or default. There are all sorts of names people are using now to replace the word master. So Afi, does that answer your question on the branching technique? Yeah, yeah, it does. So that means in the subsequent PRs, we'll go to the the main branch, right? And then we just um, push the, or create a PR directly instead of going to a branch that probably we'll, we'll create or one that you create. Yeah, I now I now understand why we did it like this. Well, well, and you, you, you said it very well. And I would, I would say it even slightly differently. It's that in your development, you'll always, you'll always create a separate branch. do your work, then propose the change, the pull request from your separate branch to the upstream primary branch. So in other words, that would mean here, we might be saying the branch, you may name it add pipeline docs or pipeline help. And you'll then propose to merge it to the upstream 
and the, the pull request will be to the upstream upstream slash master. So now is that, are you okay with that concept? And is uh -huh. that clear to you? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Yeah, it, one of the other things, one of the other mistakes that some people make sometimes is they forget, don't forget to create that, that separate branch. Because it it's complicates the life of a maintainer if you're asking to, if you are asking to merge from your master branch to my master branch. And, and it's, it, it's possible to do it. It's just maintainers don't like it. They say, please. And that's why you'll see in these checklists, be sure you're submitting this from a feature branch. Always submit from a feature branch slash topic slash I forget what the other fix branch. So that's why this guideline exists in most of the pull request templates is are you submitting from a feature branch? It's because they don't want to bother the maintainer with how do I merge from your master to my master? Mm, yeah. That, that that really makes sense. Um, okay, so the next thing I was going to ask, I think Sophie already put it there about oh. the documentation. That was one of the questions we had when we spoke yesterday. So um, how to add documentation to the plugin. We want sort of a guide so that we know where exactly or the parts that are very like, re relevant or where to put more information. Uh -huh. And also whether we should choose one plugin, let's say, so over the weekend, if we get time, we would like work on one particular plugin and on different areas, but for one plugin, or you want us to take um, like different ones and work on different places. We wanted to like know your thoughts on that. Good, good question. Very good. And that's, that's an excellent question. So, so what I'd propose is let's talk about the different locations that you could improve and the levels you can improve because, because there are different ways that people learn about and experience Jenkins plugins, right? There are different, different layers that they see things at. So, so what I'd propose is let's start with a discussion of plugin documentation from plugins.jenkins.io as the first level. So let's call this, Can I do a numbered thing there? I must be able to. Numbered list. So plugin documenta documentation from Jenkins.io is for me one common place where people go and it already may be a place to improve. The next is plugin is plugin online help from the pipeline keywords. See, what's the, and there's another word for it. Keyword may not be the right word, uh, tasks. I mean, let's call it from individual pipeline tasks and plug in online help from parameters of individual pipeline tasks. So, so what I'd say is let's first do those as, uh, as talking points as to how each of the, how you might do each of those levels and how you might help at each of those levels. Okay. So the first one here, plugin documentation from plugins.jenkins.io is exactly what you did, what you did for the Git plugin. Um, the reason I say that is if I go to plugins.jenkins.io and open up the Git plugin, what we see here is exactly the contents of the Git plugins readme file. So this README 
is the plugin documentation. And so by your submitting a pull request to update this readme file, you are improving the documentation on plugins.jenkins.io. <coughs> sorry. Oh. Oh. I'm so sorry. Yes, Things are growing in my, in my area in the world and my allergies just caused a sneeze. I hope I didn't deafen any of you. No, don't. Oh, so sorry. I really try to mute quickly and I didn't get it done in time. All right, so, so the, by submitting a pull request to the readme, you've submitted a request to improve the documentation on plugins.jenkins.io. And, and we hope that's the first, or that's a common experience. It may not be the first, but it's the common experience for people to read the plugin documentation. And if we look at, at a typical plugin on Jenkins, so the Git plugin has an awful lot of documentation because I've tried to work hard on making its documentation. If we look at other plugins, let's look at the badge plugin, for instance. There's a different example. I use this one quite a bit, but if I look at its documentation, it talks about methods and their parameters very nicely, but doesn't give any real helpful examples that I at least really get. So, so badge, badge is one where knowing why you would use badges and how you would use them and an example pipeline file could be, could be quite a bit of help. Or if we look at, let's choose other, another plugin, like maybe we pick, oh, let's just look at some popular plugins. Let's browse and instead look at all of them. So if we look at, yeah, let's look at the script security plugin. Well, no, it's got pretty good documentation. Okay, so that was a bad choice. But what you do is you can look for plugins and documenting at the readme level is a good opportunity to help the plugin and improve what it does for users. So maybe you could use HTTP request. Sorry, what was that? HTTP request. Oh, good. Let's try that one. Thank you. You're you're giving us all right. So let's take this one. Okay. Yeah. So here, here is the, the HTTP request plugin. And now if we wanted to add additional help, additional guidance to this, we can certainly write more. And in fact, there are things we can improve here, like stop this from being a, a wide scroll bar and, and make sure that the code actually looks right when it's laid out on the screen. So, so there are lots of improvements to be made there. Yes, so this is a good one. And the way you would do this is you just submit a pull request to the readme file. So here's the README, and what do you know? It looks exactly the same as the uh, online help because that is the online help page for that, that, that plugin. So, so that's the first level is submit a pull request to the top level README with the with more examples, for instance, and more text describing the examples, just like you did with a Git plugin. So that one, that one is a, a, a good help. However, it doesn't address one of the common mistakes that we saw from many users is many users complain that the individual pipeline task documentation are inadequate, right? Incomplete, inadequate, flawed, et cetera. So let's use HTTP request as an example. So first, first page, top level readme. What about, let's look for this same plugin in the Jenkins documentation set. So I'm going to go to documentation. Let's go, oh, 
get to the right site. And of course, my navigation is not working from there. Here we go. Now we go here to HTTP request plugin. And this is the documentation for the HTTP request plugin. Interesting. And it, now if you want to improve this documentation, you have to find the location for that inside the plugin source code. So this is the second level. All right, so pipeline task documentation is inside the pipeline, the plugin source code, uh, because it is displayed to the user as online help and is also automatically extracted to the to the let's see what we just to the online documentation page so let's take the example here where to go no i jumped too far this one here we go so this page pipeline step page is extracted from the GitHub repository. So if we look for some words, for instance, like this one performs an HTTP request. Now, if we search here, we should be able to find that text. Here it is. So it's in this HTML file. Now, why an HTML file? Well, because it's delivered as online help and we have to present it to the user using HTML. So what this is, is extracted from HTML help page. And so if you want to improve, to improve that, that help page, submit a pull request for the HTML help. So we've now talked about documentation for plugins.jenkins.io and exist, what I should say differently, existing plugin online help for individual pipeline tasks. And what we did was find it there and you could add to it. And that's a good way to add value of, hey, I'm going to provide some more examples or I'm going to provide more details about this thing. Now, the bigger challenge is when we have missing plugin online help from parameters of individual pipeline tasks. And again, this is why are we caring because many Many users complain that the existing documentation is incomplete. Let's go back to our HTTP request plugin and see if we can find an example of something that's incomplete. Like, yeah, here you go. Custom headers has no description telling us what, what is custom headers? How is it used? What does it mean? Form data has no description. What is it? What does it mean? HTTP mode does, but if we wanted to add a description of what are custom headers and what is form data, we need to find the place to create that, that online help. So, so let's, questions so far? Sorry, I'm, I'm talking an awful lot here and I'm not letting you ask questions. Afi or Sophia, do you do you have things that you'd like to ask at this point? No, 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 you can go right. No, go ahead. Okay, all right. So, so what we saw then is here we've got custom headers that has no help text, but HTTP mode does have help text. So what we would guess is help for custom headers probably needs to go into the source code somewhere near the help for HTTP mode. 
this is just me guessing, but that's, we've got to insert something. So we need to find the location, find the location where that help should be inserted in the source code. Insert some help, compile the plugin, uh, run it in Jenkins and confirm that the help we added is visible. And that, that's not as, not as friendly as I'd like it to be, right? But I have to openly admit that's the reality for right now that because this help is done, it's placed in specific locations by convention the name of the help file is, is chosen based on the name of the data field that it's documenting. And so we have to find that location and, just, and put it there. So if you're okay, we've got about 10 minutes. I can try this experiment really quickly here and see if we could do it with HTTP request and custom headers. Would that be okay for the two of you admitting that yeah. I may fail? <laughs> That'd be great, go, go ahead. Okay. And so here is my working environment. I haven't, is the text there large enough to read? And do we have HTTP? Oh, we already have HTTP requests. So apparently I've worked with it before. Okay. All right, so we need a fork. Okay, so the thing that we wanted to document is custom headers. So I'm gonna first look for it. Okay, there are a lot of mentions of custom headers. And we, th I think that custom headers documentation will probably be somehow similar to the documentation for HTTP mode. So I'm also gonna look for HTTP mode. And there are lots of mentions of HTTP mode. Okay, so, so they're probably both in there somewhere. Now there is already help text for HTTP mode. It says the HTTP mode of the crest such as, so I'm gonna copy that and try to search for that. Okay, so notice that this file, source main web app help HTTP mode.html has some text in it that matches what I was seeking. So does this one another one. So let's look and look at those two files and see if we can guess which one is the one that we see on screen. Okay, I can't tell because they are the same exact text. Such no, as... there is one which is capitalized. Sorry to interrupt, Mark. Oh, there is. Oh, oh very yeah. good, Bruno. Okay. So this one is in lowercase and the other one is in uppercase. Excellent, we get very lucky, very good. So we know which one it is. Thank you, Bruno, that's great. All right, so we got very lucky that this is the one that is really being displayed in that page. Excellent, okay, given that we could guess, now let's look for HTTP, so it's, the, the path here tells us something about it. So a source main resources, okay, it's text files, or it's not source code, it's related to source code. So text files, HTML, etc. In this class path, and for the class, HTTP request step. Now, if we look at HTTP request step, this class, and where, where does it occur in 
in the tree, we see, oh, here's a Java source file. Okay, so that's the implementation. Here's the configuration page for it. And here are a bunch of different help files for options or parameters to that HTTP request step. So this looks quite promising. All right, we've got content type. And if we look here, content type has this description. So somehow I'm hoping that custom headers is in this file and is mentioned there which it is, there's custom headers, and it's got this thing called the data bound setter, which makes it, that's, that's Jenkins, Jenkins stuff to tell us, yes, we can use that. So I wanted to add something for, for custom headers. So what I do is just as there was a content type, I'm going to, cheat and copy that to custom dash custom headers where that is this thing right here ah oh, I, I just killed my terminal oh that would be sad oh whew. there we go okay So now I've created this file. I admit it's got the wrong content, but I'm going to add some content to it. Okay, so this adds, so I'm gonna make a guess, add custom headers, HTTP heading, headers to the request that is sent. Now this one really would beg for much more description because custom headers takes a name, a value and a mask value. But let's try just that much, just what I did, because let's see if we can see that already. So maven clean jenkins.version equals 2.347 hpi colon run. And what this is going to do is compile the plugin, start a Jenkins version 2.347 with that plugin loaded so that I can experiment with it, explore it, and see if I can view the online help for it. Now, while it's doing that, because of the way I'm developing, I have to turn on a tunnel. Sorry about this, but my because I'm not developing on my own local machine, I have to Okay, I think the tunnel I want is this one. All right, so we're going to look at localhost. And you won't have to do this because you develop on your own computer. There, okay, so here we have Jenkins 2.347. And if we look at the installed plugins, we should see HTTP request right here. And it's private something something M weight. So we were successful. And if we're lucky, it's got enough of pipeline loaded that when I do slash pipeline dash syntax, I'll be able to see the online help. It does, we got lucky. So HTTP request, here are the, here's the online help that it already had. Under advanced, we're going to look for custom headers. Custom headers, I don't see my help. Okay, so I was not, I was not successful. It doesn't show my help there that I thought I was going to get. Okay, so sorry you have watched me fail. Once again, uh, if you'd like, I'd be happy we could schedule a session even tomorrow if that works for you to try to do this exercise again and try to get it so I succeed. Sure, yeah, that, that'd be very 
good. Um, Sophie, what about you? Would you be available? Um, no, tomorrow I'm fine. Fine. I I think Monday should be preferable. Monday. Okay. If if Monday would be better for you, Monday. Let me let me double check my calendar. Just a minute. I have to look at my work calendar. Monday at this time. So right now we are at what time? We are at 8 a.m. So Monday. I could I could move some things around and make this time work for Monday. So if Monday works for the two of you, Sophia and Afi, is that okay for you? Yeah, but I would love it to be um, an hour later than now. An hour um, later, okay. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let me double check my calendar then. So Just a minute. For you. Yes, so, okay. so an hour an hour later is actually a little better for me as well. So that's mm -hmm. great. So if I do, because right now we are at, yeah, so 9, 9 a.m. my local time. Sorry, talking. Yes, that time Monday would be great. I can move that one event. So let's plan for Monday. We will talk then. I'll schedule thank it. You. And thanks for your patience as we go through this. Thank you, too. All right. Have a great day. You, too. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.